Hey everyone, so I've been getting a lot of requests to do an actual in-depth tutorial on how I do my fur and just a slowed down drawing video. So I thought I would do that for you guys today. So right now I'm working on a current piece. This is of a leopard. So I thought I would show um, the process of doing fur and how to get the details when doing an eye. So today I'm just going to focus on how to do the eye. So there's many different ways to do fur. Um, a lot of people just use an eraser, like a, a very fine eraser, or maybe kneaded eraser, and they'll just erase white hairs um, over the, the part that's already been drawn in. Um, but I found that that's what I did for many, many years, but I found I just can get as much accuracy as I can with doing this. So what I'm doing is I'm actually scoring the paper or scratching the paper, leaving indents using um, a specific tool that I use. So the tool that I use is, uh, I made it myself. It's just a nail that I hot glued into an empty pen cartridge and uh, sanded the tip of the nail a little bit rounder using 400 grit sandpaper and that's basically it. Now you can use some other, you can buy tools like you can buy uh, embossing tools but I didn't really know about that at the time when I made it and now I've made a few of these and I have them for pretty much every purpose that I need so I don't really have a use to then buy specific tools for it. Um, but that's something that you could do. They're all over. You can get them on Amazon or Michael's craft stores and just about anywhere. Basically how this, um, this technique works is you're scoring the paper, so you're leaving an indent, and when you do a bunch of these indents and have them overlapping, then when you go over it with either graphite or charcoal or whatever medium you're doing, uh, the charcoal will stick to the high points that aren't scratched in and it'll make those dark but it'll leave the indented parts white. So it makes it a lot easier to get white hairs on a dark background and because you're indenting it using a sharp tool uh, they stay very uh, sh I guess sharp not like faded uh, which might happen if you're using an eraser. To, to do this and then when you actually indent it and you go over it with your charcoal if any charcoal gets in there you can really easily remove it using a kneaded eraser if you have to but it it's so much more accurate and I have used this technique for all fur now for many many of my past and past projects and I'm going to continue to use it in the future as well now I've seen uh, many different people using the same technique. Uh, I don't know who started it or who invented it, but personally I learned it from another person on YouTube, uh, Lisandro Pena. I'll link to his uh, channel in the description and he had made a multi-part tutorial, full tutorial on um, this technique and this is how I learned it. So I feel like I should at least give him a shout out or give him credit for um, teaching people and giving me the ability to now use it and pass it on to other people. So I will uh, link to that down below in the description if anybody wants to go check it out. Uh, that would be cool. So this piece that I'm working on right now, it's a full size piece. It's uh, 24 by 36 inches. Um, so it's pretty big. Um, and Basically, the, the way you, how you want to do the fur is you have to understand fur direction. So you, you really do need a reference photo, especially when you're just learning how to, to do fur and, and this technique. You really have to pay attention to a reference photo. So understanding fur direction, if you're, all of your fur looks like noodles and they're going whichever, or going whichever which way, and they just look like a frizzy mess, it's not going to look realistic. So if you want something realistic, you really have to pay attention to what looks natural for the animal, whether it's a bear, tiger, lion, 
uh, leopard or even birds as well. Just understanding how the hairs and the, the fur moves in the animal is super important. The next thing that you need to pay attention to is fur, it overlaps. So when you're doing this, you want to start at a f the furthest away point and move your way towards the middle. So if you're starting, if you're doing a face of an animal, you would start near the, at the top of the head or the ears and the bottom of the chin and slowly work your way towards the eyes and then the nose and the, the between the eyes. But you have to, to start at the furthest away points and then you push your strokes outwards to make the fur, uh, like the, the, the lines of the fur. Now, I'm no art teacher, I'm no professional teacher or anything like that, so go easy on me. I don't really know how to explain my stuff too well, but I hope that makes sense in a way. Basically, just work from out to in. I, I guess that's all I can really say about it. And yeah, that's basically what I'm doing here right now, as you can see. So I started at the the far back corner of the eye and I started there and I've been working my way towards uh, the left so I started from right to left and what I'm doing is overlapping the hairs so I'll do kind of a set of hairs and then my next set that's going to be in front of them I'm going to slightly overlap those so each so it's forming layers and layers of hair and it looks more natural that way so the other thing too is you tend to want to have different size sizes of uh, your embossing tools or if you hand make them yourself. Um, kind of a, a large, medium, and then fine. So right now I'm working on my fine, I'm using my fine one. Um, as you get closer to the eyes and sometimes the, the, the nose, you get a lot of finer hairs. So you want to have a variety um, and mix them in kind of everywhere as almost like down or um, just thinner thinner fur as well. But also just kind of mix them in here and there. Just, just put a variety in. Um, as you get to certain areas, you'll see that in, in your picture, it, it has thinner hairs and then certain areas have thicker hairs. So just kind of follow that, but also mix some in every here and there just to make it look... A little bit more um, scattered or a little more natural that way so yeah now you can see now I switched back to my medium size I went from my fine for some areas and then now I'm going back to my medium size just kind of depends what the what the picture shows and uh, just yeah to, just try to follow your reference as best as possible and usually the outcome is is the most accurate so also uh, another point pointer is uh, when you're doing the fur you push down and then you swipe up and you get less pressure as you're going up. So it starts out at a wider base and then it goes more narrow towards the tip to kind of do a, a natural taper. So you don't want to push with the same pressure all the way and then release uh, your hand or you'll just have a straight line that's the same thickness. You want a natural taper to the hair. Something that you are going to need is a little lamp or some sort of uh, movable light because if you have just a, a standard light overhead like ceiling light or just a window uh, you're not going to really be able to see your lines. It's, it's just going to look like a blank page you have to have your light at an angle so I have my light uh, down down on the left and it's angling up so it's casting a shadow on all of my indents so that's how I can actually see what's going on the the direction of the fur and how much I've filled it in um, if it's just an overhead light or something behind you directly onto the paper you're not going to see anything so you do have to have a little lamp um, or something to, to cast the shadow. Also, don't be afraid to put a lot of fur. 
animals do have a lot of fur. So don't try and skimp out or think that, oh, well, it, there's already a lot there. Once you actually put the charcoal down, you're going to realize that there's a lot of empty gap and it looks off. It looks, uh, it just kind of looks weird. Um, now, you don't want to just go crazy and then have flatten out your paper. You still have to leave high points, but don't don't go too light on the fur. Just make sure you put a decent amount. If you think that that's enough, well, maybe put a little bit more and you should be fine. Unless it is, you know, like a bald spot or something. Just use common sense and, you know, it'll work out. Okay, so now I'm working at the under part of the eye and you can see I'm doing the, the layering. So I started out further down and as I'm working my way closer to the eye, I'm overlapping the hairs, uh, treating the layers. So I just do this all the way around the entire piece. That's what you have to do. Um, using different, I'm using the, the different sizes as well to give a little bit of variety, some thinner and thicker hairs, uh, just to try and, you know, make it look a little bit natural. Um, but I don't think I have too much else to add for this part. So I'll just let you guys watch until the next section and then I'll start talking again. So enjoy this bit. Oh yeah, just one more thing. Just wanted to say that I am going to be doing another tutorial uh, on fur, but it'll be more medium to long fur. So it's a little bit different, but all the same sort of thing, so it'll be a shorter tutorial, but I am planning to do one a little bit later on. So if that interests you, you know, let me know. Feedback would be great. Um, so yeah, just uh, enjoy this until the next section. And we're back to uh, this tutorial so now we're actually putting pencil to paper uh, I use the majority of my my pencils that I use are uh, carbon pencils and I use the wolf carbon pencils and I've used them for most of my pieces and if anybody knows how I can get sponsored by them please tell me that would be great because I love their pencils um, so yeah, now I'm just working on the actual eye. So I'm just outlining it. I have it all sketched out. Also, something important too is uh, people always ask me how to do something like realistic. It, I find it always helps if you sketch it out first and do an accurate sketch. Because the more accurate your sketch is to start with, the easier it is for you to put the detail down. So if you have to do a grid, then do a grid. I do a grid on pretty much all of my pieces now. Um, it's just so much easier. It takes a little bit of time at the start, but you can get a much, much more accurate sketch. And then when it comes to the detailed part, you know where everything goes, and it's just so much easier. So sketch it out. Put time in and sketch it out. So I'm just outlining the... Uh, the areas that I'm going to be uh, drawing black 
completely black and then the parts that are going to have some of the details so just outline that um, and then yeah start filling in when uh, when it's appropriate I guess um, yeah it uh, I don't I don't honestly I don't really know what to add for information I don't do this sort of thing I've never really done this sort of thing so uh, I mean, I hope it's uh, making sense so far. Um, so yeah, just draw it in, fill in the black. Put the black where it needs to be all black. And then um, I also use a, uh, a Q-tip. I find a Q-tip works really well to help smudge. Uh, it's, it's small, so you can use it better than your finger or putting a, a tissue paper on your finger. So... That's uh, another tool that I use. Okay, so now I'm just uh, coloring, coloring in the iris using the uh, the charcoal with uh, with the Q-tip uh, just makes it pretty easy. Just uh, doing that, um, I don't know, pretty self-explanatory, I would say. Just fill everything in uh, roughly, and then once everything is filled in, then you start adding some more of the detail. Okay, so basically what I'm doing now is now that I've got the uh, iris to about as dark as I want it or need it, um, I'm just using my pencil to fill in a few of the uh, dark shadowy parts in the detail of the eye. So putting, putting dark where it needs to be dark and then I'll later go over the lighter parts with um, a fine eraser. I'm using the Tombow mono eraser and uh, just to bring out some of the highlights and then I'll just keep doing that back and forth until I actually get the the detail and the look that I am trying to get. So and then after this part I'll uh, I'm gonna do the reflection of the eye and the eyelid. Uh, it's all pretty I'm not going to say self-explanatory, but you can kind of see what's being done um, in the video. There isn't too much for me to add in terms of uh, explanations or anything. Uh, just watching it, just seeing it visually done should should be helpful. So, and then uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next section again.
Woohoo! We finally get to see what we've all been waiting for and see the picture actually come to fruition with the detail and the hours and hours and hours we put into doing the fur. Now we can actually see that all of that hard work paid off. So basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm using the tip of my pencil just to fill in all of the spots that are supposed to be dark but the rest of it I'm angling my pencil very very shallow so that I'm using more the side of the charcoal more flat so that it just kind of grazes along the tops the high points and I just do that across you know the whole piece any any area that I know that is dark I'll fill it in dark first and then I'll go over the rest around it with uh, with the pencil just going flat and then I, I can add uh, uh, fill it in and use my uh, q-tip to to shade it a little bit but yeah so just going over the whole thing and this part goes a lot quicker um, and it's way more enjoyable than all of the scratching. The scratching honestly is the worst part of drawing or doing this sort of drawing in my opinion because uh, every time you look at your piece it looks like you haven't done anything really and it's not until now that you you see it really pays off. Now although this technique um, I really do love and I find it makes it a lot easier and to go a lot faster um, you do need to have a basic, uh, I would say, level of drawing to to really be able to bring it to its full potential, um, or a certain level of drawing to bring it to its full full potential. Um, if you know someone can only do a stick figure, draw a stick figure using this, it's not gonna make them give them the ability to do a, a detailed you know, lion or something like that. You do need to put in a lot of practice. That's the number one thing that I tell people is if you want to make improvements, you do need to practice like hundreds and hundreds of hours. Um, there's no one tip or trick that is going to make you improve and uh, increase your ability. It's just the time that you put into it. Um, I was already, you know, doing doing portraits and and you know animal pieces before I, I started this technique and it just made it a lot easier and to go a lot faster but you do need to put in the time to to really get it to its full potential basically what I'm trying to say is that if uh, you use it and you you try it out and it doesn't look um, you know exactly how you want it first try don't worry it just takes time to really get used to it and you know practice makes perfect I'm you know still not perfect I still have so many different areas I need to improve on there's so many different artists that are way better at at drawing than I am so it's just the more you practice the better you'll be and um, just understanding shading and and shapes and forms and all of that kind of stuff is so important for uh, a detailed work. It's not just the detail of the fur, but everything else that goes around it, especially shading and the direction of the fur. So the more you practice, the more you practice, the more you'll actually understand it and the more it'll it'll come kind of easy to you. So don't worry if it doesn't turn out perfect the first time. Just keep at it. Keep practicing. And, you know, in a year you'll look back and be like oh my god I've made such a huge improvement and that's just gonna continue the more you practice it's all about the time you invest into your work here is uh, where you can really start to see the uh, the importance of layering um, you know starting further back and then working your way in you can see the the hairs overlap one another and it gives that that natural flowy look um, so yeah basically you just you know shade it in color it in and then uh, any spots that you really need to uh, you need lighter you can use your kneaded eraser make it pinch the tip and then you can pull out the highlights so what I'm doing right here I'm just bringing the the white out on, on a few hairs just to really make it pop and bring that contrast. 
and I'll just keep on doing that, you know, coloring it in, uh, filling it in, and then using the kneaded eraser, use my uh, Q-tip to help uh, shade it in a little bit, and uh, I'll do that all the way around. But something else that's important is, depending on uh, what your dominant hand, whatever hand you draw with, you want to start on the opposite side. So if you're right-handed, you it's best to start on the left side and then work your way to the right, um, just so that your hand isn't smudging and you know making a mess. Um, another thing you can do, and what I do is I I tape a piece of parchment paper to my hand. So when I rest my hand against the paper, the charcoal doesn't stick to it as much. Of course it will, but it's way less than your oily skin on your hand and then it leaves grease marks or uh, little spots where uh, the charcoal sticks differently. So it just helps avoid that. Um, yeah, I, I, I do that all the time and it's something that you should really, it, it does feel kind of weird when you start, but you get used to it really fast and it's so important to keep your your artwork looking pristine basically. And here you can also see the the difference in the uh, the thicker fur which is a little bit further to the side and then the thinner fur right on the edge of the the eyelid that I'm highlighting right now. So it just gives a little bit of a variety and it makes it look a little bit more normal uh, I would say. So just pulling out the highlights and uh, working my way all the way through um, and then here here again you can really start to see the layering effect where you bring the highlights out on certain areas to really highlight the layers of fur that are going on. Now although I didn't film it or I don't think I filmed it um, all of the dark patches it is fur so I did use my my black pencils to create little black hairs coming out over the the white hairs. I did do that. I'm not sure if I filmed it, so just giving you just letting you know that I didn't forget about that part. Anyways, I keep doing the same thing. Uh you adding adding the charcoal and then uh using my Q tip to kind of soften it and smudge it in a little bit and then use the kneaded eraser to bring out the highlights. I do that uh for the majority of the rest of the video so there isn't too much more for me to add I pretty much covered everything um, I can't think of anything else but um, also leave comments if you have questions and all that but I'll uh, let you guys watch this and then I'll uh, come back near the end and just add a few more comments
Um, I'm getting pretty close to the end of uh, this eye, so I thought I would just come back and, uh, you know, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys found it useful. Um, if you did, and if you have any, you know, other questions, please leave them in the comments. If you didn't find it helpful, well, well, uh, not for everybody, I guess. Um, so yeah, just finishing up. I also just wanted to add that uh, I do have a website, cadenfiddlerart.com. It'll be linked down below in the description. Um, I don't do Patreon. I, I don't know. I personally feel a little bit weird for myself doing it. Um, but I do uh, sell prints and originals online through my website. So if you anybody wanted to support me by purchasing some of my work, that would be awesome. Um, I ship to Canada, US, France, Germany, Australia, uh, UK, so uh, if any of you are interested in purchasing anything, that would be awesome, but if not, well, I hope these videos are still enjoyable. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, take care.